Yes, uh, welcome to our uh, webinar seven. Uh, my name is Hakan Çelik. Uh, so we will be together with two distinguished panelists, speakers in this webinar. Uh, I would like to introduce them. Uh, Mr. Mesut Çiçeker, uh, he is Vice President of Lockheed Martin, one of the most important uh, global uh, companies of defense and space industry. And Mr. Mesut Gökten is also with uh, with us, together with, with us. Uh, he's acting director, Tobitak Uzay. Uh, welcome to our panel. Uh, can you hear me? Both of you. I think Thank Mr. You. Mesut is with us at the moment. Uh, yes, and, I can uh, hear you clearly. Thank you so much. Mr. Mesut Çiçeker, are you also uh, at the moment with us? together with us. I think he will be uh, with us soon. Uh, I would like to uh, summarize uh, the previous uh, webinar. So we mostly talked about uh, TÜXAT and TÜXAT technologies. With TÜXAT 5A, a new era in the space begins. Uh, TÜXAT 5A will be the new generation of communication satellite of Turkey and uh, will provide broadcast and an improvement of broadband uh, and data services. According to the plan, uh, it will be launched into the space from the United States in 2020, as uh, previous uh, speakers mentioned. Uh, the signature ceremony of the production agreement for TÜXAT 5A between Airbus and SpaceX was held at the third global uh, satellite show. Uh, the Global Satellite and Space Show, which was the scene of this historical signature, will uh, present the latest news about TÜXAT 5A and its opportunities this year. So we already talked and mentioned about technologies and development of different technologies uh, and engineering areas. Uh, I wonder if uh, does Mesut uh, Çiçeka join us? I think he will be here soon. Uh, in this webinar, uh, our title, our subject is Best Discipline to Manufacture a Satellite. Uh, despite the high cost of manufacturing and launching a satellite, countries and companies invest in a satellite manufacturing more than ever to provide more accurate data for their technology. There are especially low-orbit satellites, which are the most demanded by technology companies nowadays. Uh, so those satellites can offer high-speed internet connectivity, which is very important. Highly precise navigation and cloud computing uh, capabilities. Those capabilities are very important for customers and companies and institutions also for defense purposes. 
uh, the Pioneer uh, satellite manufacturers will come together and share their ideas about the best satellite manufacturing discipline. Uh, also, this, I think, webinars uh, will be very useful to understand uh, this, this technology. Uh, I think he's not uh, together with us, Mr. Mesut Çiçeker uh, will join soon. Let's start with Mr. Uh, Mesut Gökten. Uh, he's acting that of, ah, yeah. he, he arrives. Uh, welcome to our uh, webinar, uh, Mr. Mesut Çiçeker. It's very nice to see you. Uh, you were in Turkey uh, uh, previously, as far as I know, and you are in uh, Brussels. Or, Thank let's you. Say, Likewise. In, in, Thank you. You are in Belgium, right? Can you can you hear me, <clears throat> Mr. Chichek? Can uh, you hear? Me? Yes, uh, I'm in Belgium. I think we have some delay somehow that I uh, I see on the video. Okay, but, but you can yes, I, you. I do hear you. Yes. All right. I, I think our our friends in uh, technical area. And my microphone is open. What is the it's reason on. of this delay or echo? Maybe some of us uh, has to decrease the volume. Uh, in my opinion, I am not the expert about this, but I think my friends will will write me, and then I'll I'll, I'll let you know. So I would like to. Uh, yes, I hear you. Okay, so uh, then it's go it's okay. So, Mr. Uh, Chichekar, you have an enormous uh, experience in in this business as satellites uh, and also defense uh, uh, technologies. Uh, you, I mean, in, in, uh, yes, in the I hear you. Um... Okay, uh, uh, let me ask my colleagues. I, I wonder what is the technical uh, issue? What is the technical problem? Uh, because I think there is a, a little a delay that uh, Mr. Chichekar uh, are not able to. Uh, yes, I think I think we have a delay, and I am having difficulty to hear you now. I think uh, they will solve soon. Uh, let, let, let me let me start with Mr. Gökten. Uh, I would like to start with Mr. Mesut Gökten. Then I, I'm sure my, our friends will will solve the problem soon, and I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Chichekar. Uh, Mr. Gökten, welcome to our uh, webinar again. Thanks a lot. Uh, yes, uh, I would like to listen your. Uh, opening remarks or first comments, then I, I have uh, some questions uh, for you and then for Mr. Chichekar mm -hmm. as well. And if you have a presentation, uh, we are also ready to lis listen or watch. Yes, actually, I have a presentation. Maybe I can share it first. Thank you. Okay, and accept that. I think I'm sharing my screen right now. Yes, correct. We see it uh, clearly. Uh, Thank uh, you. Yeah, everything is okay, I guess. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Mesut Gökten. Uh, I'm director of Tibetak Uzay. And first, I'd like to talk a little bit about our institute. And then I'll talk about the new space concepts and the uh, best discipline to manufacture a satellite. So. Um, Tubitak Space was founded in 1985 as, uh, as Ankara Electronics R&D Institute. Uh, we were mostly focused on information technologies at that time. Uh, our satellite activ activities started in 2001 with the BILSAT satellite. And the BILSAT satellite was actually a technology transfer program. And the aim was to gain know-how in this field. And it was launched in 2003. And in 2006, uh, our institute was renamed or rebranded as Tubitak Uzay, Uzay meaning space. So in t from 2006, our main focus is space. Uh, we launched our first national satellite, Rasat, in 2011. 
uh, actually uh, it was the first uh, uh, na national observation satellite. It was an R&D project and it had no customer. We are, we are still operating Rosat at, at this day. Uh, at the same time, we were actually developing Göktürk 2 satellite. It's again an Earth observation satellite that was launched in 2012. And it, it was our first satellite that was actually built for, for a customer, for an end user. Uh, and in 2014, we started the Turksat 6A project. It's the first national communication satellite. It's a geo satellite. We are still working hard on that project at the moment. And in 2017, uh, also we started image, image satellite project. It is an Earth observation uh, satellite again. And it's the first submeter resolution Earth observation satellite that we are developing. So as you see, every satellite we build is, is a first for us. So uh, we, are, we are always excited about uh, our, our projects. So what we did actually in, this, in these projects, um, as I said, BuildSat was a technology transfer uh, project. But even though it, 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 it was uh, designed that way, we actually put two of our equipments on board the satellite. Uh, and also, Rosat had uh, two in indigenous developed equipments, uh, which was launched in 2011. Uh, for Gök2, we, we put five new equipments on board the satellite. And as you see, we, we are always trying to increase the local contribution in our satellites, we want to put more and more equipments that we develop. Uh, and we are, as I said, we are currently working on Image and Tuxat 6A projects. They will be launched in 2021 and 2022, hopefully. And excuse me. Uh, in these projects, we are also developing more and more equipments in Image project. Um, the star is the high resolution camera, camera that we are developing in house. And we are also de developing most of the equipments, AOCS equipments, in this case, for image project. Similarly, for Turksat CA, we are developing most of the equipments. We have even have an electrical propulsion system uh, and, uh, and also satellite management unit. So what are the main segments of the space industry? I'd like to talk first. Uh, Ground equipments, actually, uh, in terms of revenue, uh, the ground equipment is number one, it, I think with more than 50% of the revenue. Second, second place is the manufacturing segment, satellite manufacturing segment. Uh, I think it's about 30% something. It changes all the time. But uh, And the last one is, even though it's very popular nowadays, is the launch segment with about 10 to 15% of revenue. And... So satellite sector is not, uh, by industry, I mean mostly manufacturing side, uh, uh, but also there is a uh, service side and supply uh, a space value change uh, that we'd like, we, we need to mention. Uh, by upstream, we, we mean mostly satellite manufacturing and launch services. On the middle of upstream and downstream applications, there are satellite operators, service operators like Turksat, and the uh, SES, UTELSAT, etc. Uh, they are major uh, contributor to, to the industry, to the uh, sector. And there are also very uh, uh, big downstream applications like communication service providers are using satellite services. Broadcast service providers are broadly using, uh, mainly using satellite broadcasting. There are many small companies doing earth observation, value added services, and etc. So uh, space sector is uh, cross-cutting many, many, uh, many other industries at the moment. So when we talk about new space, uh, we, we have to mention about small satellites. We have to talk about small satellites. I'd like to talk about, about the small satellite classification. Uh, Femto satellites are from 10 grams to 100 grams. Uh, actually, uh, I have n I've never seen one. Uh, they are very small to be useful. Uh, they are usually um, uh, experimental satellites. So Pico and Nano satellites, they are very popular for the last decade, I guess. Uh, they are mostly CubeSats. And again, they are mostly experimental or educational satellites. And, um, and 
Um, we have micro satellites from 10 to 100 kilograms and mini satellites, which are which have the range from 100 to 500 kilograms. This is where s satellites are actually getting very useful commercially. So when we talk about small satellites uh, taking over, uh, it's mostly about micro and mini satellites. And traditional satellites are mostly larger than, uh, heavier than 500 kilograms. So this is not a very recent data, but it shows that small satellites are launching more and more, gaining more popularity and especially nanosatellites. But uh, there will be many more um, uh, micro and mini satellites to be launched uh, uh, in the next, next decade. We expect something around 10,000 satellites, uh, micro or mini satellites to be launched in the next decade. So they will be the main value creator in the space business. So I'd like to talk about the evolution of satellite manufacture and, and then what, what new space is all about. In the past, satellites were usually large and now, now they are getting smaller and smaller. In terms of operation, they were centric. Uh, they were mostly government or large entities were using them. Now they are getting distributed so you can access these satellites uh, all by yourself, you can direct uh, uh, images from an, an Earth observation satellite, you can send commands to a satellite, etc. So it's changing. And satellites were expensive, they were big and expensive, and now uh, low cost is, uh, is the uh, focus in the future. There were year long programs, Five years, ten years were uh, for, for were regular times for um, satellites. Developing a satellite platform took something around ten years, but but now they're looking uh, for a short time to orbit, and the responsive space is is the uh, new trend now. Uh, launch vehicles for single use, and they were also expensive, obviously. Now we are seeing more and more reusable launch vehicles. And satellites are one of, uh, were one of actually, there were only single satellite missions like, like communication satellites or Earth, Earth observation satellites. They were acting on their own. But uh, nowadays, uh, satellites are working like teams. They are in constellations. They work together. They communicate with, with each other. They, they form a network with each other. And in terms of, uh, uh, Customers uh, in the past mostly uh, it, uh, it was driven by public sector, military, government, uh, or scientific entities, space uh, uh, agencies. Now, uh, now and in the future, mostly uh, the customers are private. Uh, and if we compare uh, the companies in the past, we have we had very big giant companies, and now we we see more and more startups. Uh, taking the share. So what's the new space approach? Uh, the main focus, one of the main focuses uh, is the low cost. And we try to uh, reduce cost by doing more R&D in the development phase. And we are focusing on incremental development. In the, in the past, we would develop a satellite completely qualified on the ground, send it to space and never change anything. But now we are, since we are developing small satellites and constellations, with every launch we can make some uh, developments. Uh, again, uh, uh, it's mostly consumer market driven, and there is also focus on operations. Uh, there is innovation in both products, processes, services, and applications, and there are also uh, small dimensions. Both the satellites and corporations are small. Some of uh, like companies like SpaceX being the exception. So what are the challenges of this new era? One, one of them is spectrum access. So uh, spectrum is a limited source. More and more satellites are using this uh, spectrum. Uh, actually, tens of uh, thousands of satellites are uh, planned to be launched in the next decade. So spectrum access and spectrum availability is, is a problem. Another problem is funding. 
So most of these technologies are unproven at the moment. Uh, even technically, things can go well. Uh, suddenly, you may have some funding issues, and also some government agencies are uh, hesitant to uh, invo uh, invest in, in these business. And there is also another issue is uh, fierce global competition. So some big companies are building some large, very large uh, constellations at the moment. When they are actually active, uh, they can dominate every other uh, small entities or other uh, other uh, countries. And one of another issue is orbital debris. Uh, as you as you as most of you know, when you launch a satellite to space, they must stay there uh, for eternity. Um, some of them may return to Earth in uh, 50 years or 100 years. So when when there are more and more satellites are launched that there will be more uh, uh, debris when they are not um, operational, and then there may be some collisions in space. So what's what's our approach to, to, to the new space? Um, there's an historical inspiration, which Ford Model T. So uh, it, it was when mass production began. So production was uh, flexible. It was dependent on uh, standards. It was uh, actually looking for global markets, and it was staff friendly. So, uh, in, currently, in space industry, we don't have uh, we we have very limited production, and we we are looking for mass production models. So, with mass production, uh, there will be economies of scale involved, and another important factor is that we want to use more and more commercial components and we want to qualify as comp commercial components on and then uh, and then actually use them in space we want to automate our test procedures it's it's very ma ma labor intensive at the moment we'd like to uh, uh, we are actually working on uh, new manufacturing techniques like man additive manufacturing that can r reduce the cost or, or also reduce the uh, schedules and automated manufacturing, automated AIT, uh, we are not there yet, but in the future maybe if we have more volume that we can work on those. So what are the methodologies uh, that we'd like to work on? One of them is uh, concurrent engineering and lean engineering. So there is uh, satellites also pay called paper sets. So uh, there's also lots of paperwork required in satellite business, actually. We would like to reduce this uh, burden on us. So we'd like, to, we'd like an early incorporation of all engineering disciplines. Uh, that's not something we are very successful at the moment. Uh, and in space uh, industry, there are very structured reviews like PDRs, CDRs, LRRs, et cetera. We would like to reduce those reviews and we are more focused on peer reviews. And also in the, in the past, we were mostly uh, focused on uh, technology in innovation. We, would, we'd we were trying to make things smaller, faster, cheaper, etc. But now we, we'd like to work on process innovation. So we have to, uh, especially in our design and manufacturers uh, phase, phases, we have to be more innovative and more faster. Uh, so, Another uh, methodology is functional and environmental testing. Uh, in order to establish a product baseline, uh, which in turn will facilitate the serial production of a satellite, we need a thorough qualification of the new design, uh, and it's crucial. But uh, also, uh, when you are developing, when you are in a uh, mass production, uh, and uh, you are doing design increments in, in each phase, delta qualification of design increments are also crucial. Baseline design. So once the qualification of a satellite is completed, then the satellite design must be baselined or freezed in simple terms to establish a common ground for an exclusive configuration management. Design changes must be uh, exclusively managed uh, and can, should be justified in terms of customer needs and, and their impact on manufacturing standardization. And this is also important. We were not focusing on the manufacturing uh, aspect and the impact of uh, design changes on manufacturing. And we are, we are actually focusing on this area. 
uh, and also we, are, we have to closely look the obsolescence of uh, components. And after all this of these phases, uh, it's time uh, it, it, it's time to enjoy a scale of economy uh, that we create. Uh, implementing a freeze product baseline will bring a minimized cost and less market. Uh, furthermore, to make use of the manufacturing learning curve, a set of shop floor best practices should be developed, like lean manufacturing, etc. And um, I think. I think that's all for now. Uh, thank you for listening. Ah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Gökman. Vitak uh, is one of the country's most respected institutions and very important uh, scientific research center. And uh, I carefully listened to your presentation. I didn't know that there are satellites even smaller than PICO level. So a gram, gram scale, I didn't know this. It is a, a new information for me. So thank you very much. And I am sure Mr. Mesut Çiçeker uh, has lots of information and I'm sure he can speak hours and hours uh, with an enormous 43 years uh, knowledge and experience. Uh, Mr. Gökten, thank you. And Mr. Çiçeker, welcome back. Can you hear me now uh, in a better way? Uh, thank you. Uh, how about yourself? Uh, do you hear me? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I can clearly see you and uh, hear you. Thank you. It's all perfect. So I would like to listen to your uh, opening remarks and first comments. Then I have questions for you and for uh, Mr. Gökten as well. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I think... Uh, the, our Lockheed Martin fire system was causing some difficulties. And uh, after I just uh, received the, the uh, message on my screen, I kind of uh, get out of the Lockheed Martin network and now uh, we are able to communicate. And I'm very sorry that I, I missed uh, uh, almost a big part of the uh, presentation made by my uh, uh, dear colleague from uh, uh, Mr. Mesut uh, Gökten. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this um, uh, webinar. Uh, I'd like to contribute to uh, uh, some of the things that I've seen uh, over uh, 40 years of, of my aerospace uh, uh, life, I can say, uh, which started uh, out of a very, uh, is a coincident uh, that I, uh, I became a, a space engineer by coincident. I uh, graduated from Istanbul Technical University and uh, went to Canada, uh, was looking for a job. And uh, uh, I think my luck uh, that I, I was, uh, uh, I was introduced to a technician who was working in a, a space company providing uh, transponder subsystems to uh, uh, larger aerospace companies and uh, it was in Montreal uh, it's called uh, in those days SPAR Aerospace well uh, I think uh, space industry uh, made uh, great uh, advancements over the years it all started with uh, with space race between Russia and uh, US uh, uh, mid uh, 20th century. And, and uh, thanks to those uh, first uh, uh, military or government programs, which brought us to this point uh, today, uh, it all started with uh, 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 defense or, or space race, uh, access to space. Uh, and then uh, it was uh, really commercialized over the years. Um, I think uh, space is uh, still uh, suggesting a lot of uh, advancement, a lot of opportunities. Uh, 
beside the the communications uh, and and uh, very fashionable these days broadband applications, uh, I think uh, space exploration also will uh, give us uh, wonderful opportunities. Uh, I mean, going to the moon and then uh, asteroids for some uh, for some mining, which uh, very very uh, uh, valuable uh, mining. Uh, opportunities and then going to Mars. Uh, I may not see this in my lifetime, maybe going to Mars, uh, but I think uh, sometime in mid thirties, uh, uh, this uh, is gonna happen. And uh, I'm also very proud that uh, my company is involved uh, with Orion project, uh, which is the prime contractor for uh, Orion project, which is the uh, deep space exploration uh, vehicle, uh, which is going to get us to moon, asteroids, and then and then Mars, uh, finally. I think what I'm trying to say is, uh, first, space is uh, started with a, a space race between two big nations, and then uh, a lot of military applications, and, and also uh, the commercial space took the advantage and got the benefits of the uh, all the uh, applications done for the institutional uh, and government uh, programs and uh, but the first tryout in uh, 60s and 70s were for defense programs in in US then uh, it was uh, certified for commercial applications i think uh, I'd like to uh, finish uh, this part is saying that uh, space uh, is offering and will offer a lot of opportunities. And I'm very happy that uh, uh, Turkey also is taking uh, its role in this uh, space race. It's in the, uh, we call space club. Uh, Turkey is part of the space club because of its uh, uh, space involvement going back to late 80s and, and 90s yes uh, thank you thank you very much indeed for your uh, comments and as you mentioned uh, yes turkey is trying to uh, access and join this club uh, space club which is very important and in the previous uh, presentation mr mesut gökten also mentioned about some uh, developments on these technologies and process uh, mr gökten i have a question for you you, you told us about the new space trends. Can you tell us how and why did this trends emerged? Uh, I think we have a difficulty to hear. Uh, can you please uh, switch on the microphone? Yes, now it's now it's okay now. I think I think, I think you can. Sorry, sorry about that. So, no problem, uh, please. So things uh, changed when people uh, when when uh, the way people uh, think about space has changed. Previously, uh, mostly about it was space was mostly about public sector, uh, government agencies, militaries, and uh, scientific communities. So they were mostly focused on they were uh, focused on reliability dependability of space and not cost but uh, after uh, commercial entities were involved in space more and more and as you know commercial entities are mostly uh, focused on revenues margins and cost so so now uh, uh, now uh, the main focus of the new space is reduced cost uh, and accessing more uh, more uh, people, uh, increasing revenue, etc. And another factor is the cost of launch vehicles. Now, we, since we are using reusing vehicles again and again, the cost ha have uh, reduced uh, dramatically, and we expect the cost should uh, will be reduced even more in, in the in the coming decades. So there is uh, uh, so you can build low cost and low reliability satellites and launch them 
and and then you can if if if, if it fails you can you can then try an, another another one that can work actually so uh, and also on the consumer side there are changes uh, in the past for example for uh, video video access uh, people were mostly interested in broadcast tv broadcast but now consumers are interested in streaming they what they like to watch whatever they want whenever they want so it, it 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 also changed the satellite industry also uh, yes uh, thank you for the answer and uh, I, I would sure. like to ask a question for mr mesut uh, cheker from your last i want to continue from your last comments your your last words about uh, turkey's uh, ambition to to join to to uh, Space Club, what are your thoughts for for Turkey in space? And can you please add some more information or uh, opinion on this subject? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, am I still coming clearly? Yes, very clear. Okay. Uh, well, I go back uh, in uh, mid '80s or late '80s. Uh, uh, the uh, previous uh, president of Turkey, uh, Mr. Turgut Özal, uh, wanted uh, to have some satellites for Turkey. And uh, at that time, uh, PTT organization in uh, like, I think it was 86, 87, uh, that they started uh, checking out you know what can be done and how they can procure a satellite and uh, uh, early 90s i think it was 91 if i'm not mistaken uh turkey signed a contract with aerospecial to provide uh to to procure actually two satellites with one option and uh, here i'd like to uh, also uh, uh compliment to dr eigen uh who is now uh, the CEO of Monacosat, and he was in charge of the space uh, section of the PTT, and he was running the uh, Gölbaşı station uh, at the time, uh, taking signals from different satellites, uh, which they can be able to see from that position, uh, from Ankara Gölbaşı. And uh, uh, the first satellite, unfortunately, uh, uh, had a launch mishap launch failure uh, it was i believe 94 january and then uh well it was a, it was very wise that uh the the contract was uh put together for two a firm and one option so they used the option and also they updated the 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 market requirements and and uh, coverage areas and turks at 1b uh, finally was launched in 94 August. Uh, I, I remember in those days, uh, in the media, I, I don't remember uh, who was the editor, was saying, why we call this satellites Turksat? Turks did not do anything. Uh, Turks did not put even one screw on the satellite. Uh, I, I think it was a very short-sighted view uh, not every country makes the satellites. I mean, but buying satellites, you start this journey. And Turkey started its journey in late 80s by launching two satellites in 94 and 96, Turksat 1B and 1C. Turkey uh, became a regional important satellite operator covering, uh, covering from England to almost China because of its orbital position uh, and see today where we are today the turkish aerospace industries uh, thai has a wonderful uh, and state-of-the-art facility and they can build which they are building uh, from small to almost five metric ton satellites the infrastructure is there so if turkey didn't start this journey at that time, buying some satellites and taking its position in the uh, space club and uh, training its engineers uh, 
and uh, uh, also encouraging youngsters to uh, go into this field. Uh, in my time, uh, in 60s or 70s, uh, Turkey didn't think those things. But uh, thanks to uh, uh, some uh, visionaries in Turkey that they wanted to do this. And today is also, uh, I imagine, Tibitak also is involved very heavily uh, for designing and manufacturing satellites uh, together with Thai, Turkish Aerospace Industries. Uh, so the way I see, uh, first of all, we receive good uh, university education, good technical, we have good engineers. All they need is experiments, experiences and chances. I mean, uh, this is in our genes, actually. Also, I am a graduate of Istanbul Technical University, and I didn't know anything about space. But the education I received uh, and my ethics, uh, the way I work, uh, I took those chances well. I think the Turkish engineers, if they are given good chances, they will do wonderful things. Uh, so I think everything, it started with Turksat. Uh, first generation program. Today, uh, Turksat is uh, about to launch its fifth generation satellite and uh, uh, operate it. So a lot of experiences over the three decades. And now Tubitak is involved. Uh, uh, Thai, uh, Tur uh, Turkish Aerospace Industries, they have the facilities. Now it is the time to not only manufacture what Turkey needs, but also to go into a, a partnership and collaboration with some of the industry giants to do bigger things, to provide systems for the third countries. And this is the way that to sustain uh, for the infrastructure, making satellites for only Turkey needs will not be sufficient. So Turkey, after uh, gaining momentum in making its own systems. It has to provide subsystems and systems to uh, other nations, other aerospace. That's, that's how I see. Uh, and also, Turkish Space Agency should involve with uh, European Space Agency, other national agencies, and NASA. It, it should take also part in the space exploration. Uh, there is certain level of infrastructure which allows uh, for manufacturing and providing uh, hardware or software or design engineering. Turkey, I, I, I see a lot of good initiatives uh, to come in future. Uh, and hopefully they will come to fruition and Turkey uh, will become a good space nation. It is, uh, it is already, you. but it, 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 can, it can grow more. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very important points you mentioned. Uh, I want to come back to Mr. Uh, Gökten. Mr. Uh, Gökten, my my previous question uh, about uh, the space trends, and you mentioned about uh, this subject. How will this trend change our daily lives? Can you also explain mm -hmm. for? In among our audience, there are new beginners on these subjects. Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, uh, space was part of our lives back then, even in the 60s, I guess. So, first live uh, Olympic Games, I think it was an Olympic game that was transmitted through a satellite. And uh, in the lives of civilians, it was mostly limited to that, uh, actually. For the first two or three decades, it was mostly TV broadcasting. And then later on, the other applications we, we started to see in our lives, like some communication applications, uh, etc., and, and also GNSS applications that we started to use in the, uh, I think, in the beginning of 2000s. But now uh, space will be uh, more and more in our lives. Actually, one changes if you look at the sky in the next few days, few years, you will see actual uh, trains of satellites. That's a, that's a change for for, for us. Uh, it's very uh, exciting, actually. And you will have more 
connection. You will be con you will have broadband connection wherever you go in the world. So even though we have we think we have connection everywhere, but when you go abroad somewhere, where you go rural areas or when you go third world countries, you will you don't have uh, any broadband connection, and that's a big issue. So when you when you go that go those places uh, wherever you go in the world, even in Antarctica, uh, you will have uh, good internet coverage. You will you will you will be connected, and also uh, you your lives our lives will change in some other industries that we know that we we will we will not be aware they are related to space. Space is now being used in agriculture, and it could be it's used in insurance business. It's, it's used in transportation agencies. So space is cross-cutting more and more industries every day. That even though we're not aware, space is being used here and there. Uh, actually, it's being used everywhere. I think it will yes. it will change our lives. It will be cheaper and more accessible. Uh, I think that, that that that's that's an exciting time and a big revolution is coming. Yes. Uh, there is a there is a high demand uh, for high technology among ordinary customers. So it means uh, there will be a, another race for uh, reaching high technologies and uh, components on on uh, space competition. Uh, another question for Mr. Mesut Çiçeker uh, about we were talking about big and small satellites today in previous uh, webinars as well. What are the key differences for manufacturing small and big satellites, uh, Mr. Chicher? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, Mr. Gökten also indicated uh, and, and classified the size of the satellites. Uh, I, I think the, the big difference, in my opinion, is uh, uh, in the design and approach of, of how to manufacture those, the, the, the uh, assembly and integration uh, approach is, uh, is the big difference, in my opinion, beside the sizes. Now, uh, as Mr. Gökten indicated, uh, a, those mini satellites, nano satellites, and small satellites are, uh, the objective is uh, to be very cost effective, very short schedule, uh, depends on the quantity, the volume. So, uh, like hundreds, for example, Starlink, uh, already 600 plus small satellites are uh, orbiting around around the globe. And uh, uh, OneWeb, although it had some financial difficulties and it's in kind of, they, they uh, uh, filed the uh, chapter 11, but uh, I'm sure uh, the, some other uh, uh, investors will do the necessary to to realize this uh, project, and uh, Telesat is planning to launch uh, uh, almost a thousand plus satellites. Now, uh, also, uh, Mr. Bezos uh, is planning uh, Amazon uh, constellation. Those are like uh, based on low cost, high volume. Uh, and they are very stringent about the uh, integration and test approach. Uh, after qualifying the the quality uh, qualification unit, uh, uh, the amount of testing on the follow-on uh, spacecraft is minimized. That converts that results with the uh, uh, a huge cost savings and very short schedules. How they do this? Because if they lose that mission, the, the replacement is easy by launching many of those, like uh, uh, I think uh, August 18, uh, the last batch of Starlink uh, satellites were uh, 60 or 70 plus satellites were injected into orbit. Uh, when it comes to large satellite, uh, usually they are not many like uh, you don't manufacture five plus ton satellites in huge quantities like uh, look uh, the Turksat fifth generation I think uh, uh, 5a and 5b two large satellites orders why because it is expensive it takes a long time to manufacture 
and and get ready for the launch launch price is higher uh, you pay today spacex price is uh, we're talking 75 to 80 million dollars or sometime 90 million dollars for one shot so a uh, lot of at stake and and uh, uh, for a large five plus metric ton with uh, 60 70 plus uh, satellites with uh, spot beams steering antennas uh, a, a single launch uh, if you think about all that uh, you you're you're close to three four hundred five hundred million dollar of a price tag to have that satellite launched and ready for the operations uh, so you test you make sure that the system will work not like uh, uh, those small satellites if it doesn't work you can replace it because it didn't cost you much time it didn't cost you too much money um, so that that is the big approach difference in my opinion the the financial metric time metric uh, and uh, basically the cost uh, to say that also uh, sometimes a small platform also can cost you a lot what is that when you send uh, a platform to explore space which is sending something to Mars it is also size wise it could be small but again it's a very time consuming and one one of a kind you don't make two you don't make three you make one it takes long time to put together those type of missions and it costs a lot of money so we have to distinct what is the mission if the mission is low earth orbit uh, constellation with hundreds of satellites yes uh, you can afford cutting the corners and making like a, a cookie cutter type of approach to integration and test manufacturing but if it's a one of a kind or very expensive platform then then it takes today 36 to 48 months to manufacture those satellites and they are uh, so a lot of stake uh, a lot of at stake um, for a large platform uh, and that's why the the, the uh, approach to integration and test and manufacturing it's a huge difference um, and also uh, there is a reliability issue like uh, today the large satellites like Turksat 5A, Turksat 5B, uh, or for uh, fourth generation satellites, uh, they serve 15, maybe 15 plus years of uh, services. And uh, uh, the reliability factor is very high. Almost you want to reach to 99.5, 99.9% uh, reliability for mission success. Uh, uh, right now we don't see that reliability element that high because those are still in the uh, infancy period of the those small satellite constellations and uh, some of them are, are in financial troubles like one web uh, out of the uh, let's say middle uh, MIO like uh, medium earth orbit missions uh, O3B is uh, one of the uh, most successful of the projects uh, all the others had financial difficulties maybe we can include also iridium next uh, follow-on iridium program so uh, as much as i am excited to see the small satellites constellations and uh, uh, mio uh, applications uh, i want them to be very successful uh, but also they have to prove their reliability and financial health uh, the time will tell us one important thing to also to pay attention uh, mr. Chilik is uh, we have to do this uh, we human beings we uh, consumed earth today we are trying to 
protect and, and save Earth, we have to be careful not to do the same to space. However, all the signals that we see today, we hear, and we, we experience, we have lots of space junk, especially in the low Earth orbit. There are more than 10,000 uh, space objects sizing 1 to 10 inches uh, circulating with a very high speed in the low Earth orbit. Today, I would be also extra cautious if I was uh, if I was uh, promoting a, a small satellite constellation in the low Earth orbit, I would be also very, very concerned about the, uh, the, the, the accident probability. Uh, every day almost we see, we hear a small satellite applications and constellations filing and they are injecting those satellites into orbit. Uh, we also have to clean uh, Earth low, low Earth orbit uh, from this unused uh, uh, objects. That is, that is also open another business opportunity for some companies, uh, but it's a big concern at this point. Yes, very important uh, point. Your warning uh, about consuming Earth and additionally space as well uh, is, is yes. there a technology at the moment to to cleaning up this uh, orbit level uh, junks do we have yes yes uh, right now it's in the uh, design uh, phase but uh, i mean big primes like lockheed martin airbus talus uh, 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 northrop grumman and boeing they they have different designs and projects and also there is also big uh, financial backing for those projects we will see those like uh, almost like a, uh, a space vehicle let's say a type of spacecraft going and uh, taking those objects uh, uh, and and getting away from low earth orbit uh, so that there are a number of initiatives we don't have today as of today uh, uh, actually it didn't start but it will we have to i hope uh, they will not also pick up useful uh, uh, satellites as well no. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we need them. no <laughs> sure the, the technology <laughs> Technology will uh, will not uh, make us those mistakes. Of course, uh, they will select the, the uh, correct uh, satellites. So the final question, uh, the final subject: uh, How will Tubitak space involve in new space? Uh, are you taking uh, action? Any action? Actually. Last couple of years, we were very busy with uh, two big satellite projects that we were working on, IMAGE and TurkSat 6A. So we were not very active in this space, uh, in the new space, actually. But um, since we are now getting into the, the AIT phase of these satellites, now we are looking for new projects, new opportunities. And one of the opportunities uh, is, I guess, small satellites and uh, new space. and. Uh, this year we started working on uh, new uh, new projects, new approaches, but we have to change the mind of people, I guess. First, uh, people are used to work uh, used to work in satellite business is more focused on reliability, and they are very much focused on reliability. They they don't get the idea of uh, building a satellite with low reliability. It's uh, horrendous to think that they, they, they manufacture a satellite and then it will fail. So uh, we have to just first accept the fact that it's an option now. Uh, failure is an option in, this, in, in, in new space. And uh, we're actually uh, in business development phase in, in a couple of projects. We are working on the concepts. We are uh, looking at how we can improve uh, our manufacturing facility how we can adopt uh, the, the facility. Uh, we, we, we were actually today discussing how much, how many satellites we can 
manufacture in our current facility uh, if we can ch make some changes. And uh, we're also working on some payloads for small satellites at the moment. So yes. next year, we, we, we hope to find a, a new, uh, we have to sign a new contract, hopefully, and start uh, with some bold actions. Thank you very much. So this is the, the, the final of our webinar. It's a, a great benefit to listen and share your opinions uh, and your valuable uh, information. Thank you for both of our distinguished uh, panelists, Mr. Mesut Cicceke. He joined us uh, from uh, Belgium. Uh, he's the Vice President of Lockheed Martin. And Mr. Mesut Gökten, uh, Acting Director of Tubitak Uzay. He joined us uh, from Ankara. And I also would like to thank the audience for watching us. A good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.